right, I thought we'd talk about antennas today. I've been uh, reading a book and I uh, thought I would uh, introduce it to you if you haven't seen it before. But this is a very old book. Uh, this is like the very first uh, antenna book that I owned. Um, I have a newer one, but I can't find it. I don't know if I threw it away, but I have a, a, a newer one. It's a big, thick thing. Um, but I still enjoy this one the, the most. I don't know why. I just, I like this one. I like this one a lot. Um, it's got Smith chart stuff in it. It's got a bunch of graphs and stuff. All kinds of antennas that you can build. Um, it's just, it's, it's really, really good. All right. The, but the uh, book I wanted to talk about today is this one. I don't know if you've seen this one or not. Uh, antenna physics. Okay. So I was drawn to it because I'm a physics guy. Um, and it had some cool three-dimensional stuff in it. Um, so I have a lot of viewers who are real pro mathematics. They think you, you can't learn anything unless you know the, the physics, you know the mathematics behind it and everything. So, so this is for them. <laughs> this, is like, this is like the hardcore. And, and in fact, this book really, really wimps out on it. <laughs> but, but it does introduce to, to a little bit, but it does wimp out on the actual math. You really do have to have a physics theory to do the real math. Um, but uh, it has a... Uh, some cool things about, you know, why do antennas work? Uh, I've always found antennas very, very magical. Um, they just don't seem right. <laughs> um, they talk about gain and what does it mean? They talk about dipoles and kind of give you an idea that uh, dipoles radiate in a donut uh, in free space. A dipole radiates in a, in a donut. And then they do different things if they're next to things and they're reflecting stuff. We'll, we'll kind of get into that stuff here. Empirical calculation of the aperture of an isotropic antenna. Ooh, isotropic antenna. That was not isotropic. Um, anyway, um, free space path loss. So it uh, uses some pretty cheesy formulas in the in the beginning. Okay, those aren't. Those aren't too exciting, but then it jumps right into Maxwell's equations. Uh, so it talks about Maxwell's equations. It's a bit hand wavy, but it talks about the four the four equations and what do they mean? Um, you can't have a monopole, and you you know flux lines, and you know one of them's actually uh, uh, Ohm's law. <laughs> anyway, so. And then they introduce the uh, the wave equation, which is a partial differential equation. Uh, uh, yeah, multi I should say multi multivariable partial differential equation, I guess. Um, and it it uh, does the motion of a string, the motion of a motion of an anything, um, and then they then they start in with uh, uh, the the Maxwell's equations versions of the uh, of the wave equation and they threw that all in there. So, you know, a lot of, a lot of cool things, but again, this is very, very hand wavy. They really don't go into a lot of it. It's just kind of like, ah, oh, here it is. Uh, yeah, that's the kind of Maxwell e equation type of thing, but they never actually solve a waveguide or boundary equations or anything like that. They don't, don't do any of that stuff that you have to do in physics, but um, they do talk a little bit about it. And they talk about that uh, the E and the H fields are perpendicular to one another. But this is probably one of the most interesting things right here, which is you have a, a dipole and you have field lines and they wiggle back and forth on the antenna. Why don't they just stay there? Why do they leave? Why do they have a tendency to just go away, right? Why does the antenna actually transmit? I've always found that really, really fascinating and I really don't have a good gut feel for it. Um, Here's the field lines and they kind of they kind of make loops and then the loop kind of detaches itself and then whoo, and it goes off into free free space. But it's like, you know, why? <laughs> why does it do that? Um, I, I probably knew better when I was when I was a physics major. But um, yeah, it, it just seemed kind of magical. I remember my my electromagnetism book had had a very short, short chapter on antennas way in the back. We spent a, a lot of time on, on waveguides, rectangular waveguides, circular waveguides, all kinds of waveguidey things and you know, uh, all, all, all kinds of weird things. Anyway, uh, uh, dielectrics, dual of math for all that kind of stuff. There's a really cool derivation here that is interesting where you actually calculate that free space has an impedance of 377 ohms. 
Uh, that's kind of a weird thing, right? 377 ohms, you know. What, what, <laughs> anyway, it tells you why it's 377 ohms. But that just makes it be more confusing as well. If you have a 50 ohm antenna, why does it want to let loose and go into 377 ohms? It seems like that's higher resistance and it doesn't really want to do that. So, I don't know. Anyway, uh, talks about power. And then it gets into the actual three-dimensional... Uh, uh, far field patterns and, and of, of, of antennas. Why do they, why do they have the shape that they have, right? Uh, a, uh, a dipole is a donut, but why do other antennas have weird shapes, you know, clover leaf and, and other things. And, um, they basically kind of hand wave all this stuff. And then they say, okay, really what you do these days is you get this program called easy neck or I don't, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, easy NEC. And uh, it does uh, all of these equations in three dimensions and allows you to model things. And so um, I thought I would do uh, a separate video on uh, running, running this. Now, I'm not an expert. I know enough to be a little bit dangerous. Um, we'll run this for a couple, couple antennas. We'll run it for a, a dipole in free space, a dipole over, a, over the Earth and a, a vertical antenna. We'll, we'll, we'll do those and, and uh, see what happens with those. It's interesting that I, um, I'm familiar with all of these equations and stuff because I actually did them in optics. There's no difference between, between radio waves and optics. And um, uh, imagine antennas for light. So it's all the same equations. It's all the same things. It's just the dipoles are very, 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 very small. <laughs> but the shapes of the three-dimensional waveforms and stuff are exactly the same. It's all the same math. And so we actually had to do these equations and, and stuff to learn how light is created inside of an LED. So inside the LED, somewhere in there, electricity turns into photons, right? Electrons turned into photons. And uh, that's sort of like an antenna radiating. And um, it's all the same equations and the same math and everything. And so we, we would do that for, for a modeling of LEDs on a really, 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 really tiny scale. <laughs> um, let's see here. They talk about dipoles and cross dipoles. They talk about the Poincaré sphere. Uh, which uh, optics engineers also talk about the Poincaré sphere, uh, which is a measure of the polarization angles of a radiating system. So light can have polarization and, um, and uh, antennas can have polarization, vertically polarized, horizontally, elliptically polarized, circularly polarized. Um, they all have to do with the, uh, the Poincaré sphere if you want to plot it out. And it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a Smith chart for for uh, polarization. Anyway, uh, what else do they talk about in this book? Um, these are the type of waveforms that I'm used to in, in little tiny, little tiny LEDs. We would have uh, some uh, field, field lines that looked something like that. Um, talk about uh, phased antennas, uh, collinear antenna, uh, both in transmit and receive. Um, they talk about transmission lines, how those work. Uh, a little bit hand wavy, but uh, it's okay. Um, talk about uh, open, open ladder where the uh, dielectric doesn't really enter the equation very much. It's mostly air. So these are very, very efficient, efficient because the uh, dielectric is air. And then if you have a solid uh, coax, then you have a uh, plastic dielectric or a foam dielectric, and uh, they can be, have a much lower velocity factor, not as efficient and stuff, have, have more attenuation or frequency and stuff. Um, and they talk about the equations. I remember having to solve these in the hard way, but they give you some equations. Uh, what else do they have in this book? Smith charts. So they have a whole thing here in conjugate match, Smith charts, what's the SWR? Why does re reflected back is bad? It gets back into your transmitter. Uh, so anyways, they have a whole bunch of that in here. And then they sort of go into the uh, the the uh, easy neck or whatever the thing is called. Um, and uh, we will do some of this in the next video. 
antennas using multiple sources. You can have them in phase, out of phase. Uh, you can have multiple radiators. So uh, I, will, I think tomorrow we'll take a look at a, uh, a YAG also. YAG is very, very interesting looking, has multiple, multiple elements. Uh, here they have uh, using uh, phase shifters to, uh, to modify the different elements. Uh, they talk about wave propagation. Um, I doubt that they talk about the evanescent wave in here, but they might. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Vertical antennas. Um, there's some cool modeling of different type of grounds. There's the ideal ground and then the actual ground. Um, if you have a metal ground, if you have radials, or if you have a plate of steel or aluminum or something, or if you have the earth, a, a rock or something that's acting as a ground, it can be lossy. Uh, you can model that in these programs. Uh, talked about feed points. What else they have in here? Loop antennas and what's in the back. Galactic noise, noise in the universe. Anyway, there you go. Um, so would I recommend the book? Um, yeah, if you're very, very curious about the kind of the hardcore aspects of antennas, if you're just kind of wanting to know about antennas, I recommend this book first. Um, but if you sort of either have a physics degree or you're very, very interested in the hardcore math behind antennas and theory and stuff like that, I think this is a good introduction. It doesn't doesn't use really any too difficult of an equations and stuff. You, might, you may have to brush up on some things you may have forgotten, but it's not it's not so bad. And really, it just kind of points you to, you know, hey, nobody does that math anymore. Everybody just uses ECAD programs. So, yeah, there you go.